Hello and happy Monday. I hope you guys are having a great day. I hope you congratulated yourself today because you made it to the end of January and into the start of February. I don't know how often it happens that the first of the month actually happens to be a Monday. So congratulations, you also made it through Monday. So the end of a month, the beginning of a new month, and a Monday. We hopefully are on a roll. For those of you who have not listened to this week's podcast yet, you'll know my Monday did not quite go according to plan. (laughs) Um, The podcast episode for this week that was originally planned to go up for you to be able to hear today got half uploaded and the other half got deleted. So you'll hear all about it if you listen to this week's podcast, but I hope you've had a better start to your Monday and end to your Monday than how mine started. Either way, we are here, we have made it through, and congratulations to us because I think right now we all deserve a little bit of congrats for not just surviving January, but making it to a new month, continuing to move forward, and continuing to maybe not necessarily always thrive, but keep trying to thrive given the circumstances and the situations that we're all living through. So happy Monday. And today I want to talk to you guys, and we'll probably talk more next week about this too, but I want to talk to you about something that I shared on Instagram. And I'm not actually sure if I shared it to our Facebook page. So if I have not, I will look when we're done live chat tonight. Um, And if I have not, I will share it to our Facebook page. And we'll probably talk a little bit more about it next week because Valentine's Day is coming up and it just makes sense to talk about it. But As I said when I posted earlier today, we're going to talk a little bit about love and why I think we need to sort of change our evaluations and descriptions and how we look at it. And so the thing that I saw on Instagram today that I shared was basically a quote that said, we need to stop teaching people that they need to love themselves before anyone else can love them. Hello, Brenda. Happy Monday. And the reason that I thought this quote was so important and why I wanted to chat with you all about it tonight is because I think it raises a really valid point. How often, especially throughout the course of our whole lives, have we heard, nobody can love you until you first love yourself, which actually just reinforces for those of us who have had trauma in our lives or we feel like we're not worthy in some way. There are so many of us that have self-doubt regardless of whether it happens to be about your personality, your body image, all of those things. And if we're constantly telling our children, our family, our friends, that they need to learn to love that part of themselves that they struggle with before anyone else can love them, then we're basically teaching them that because of what they've gone through, because of the struggles that they're having, They're not actually worthy of love. And I think that's the wrong message to be sending. So when I saw this quote today, I was not really sure how to put into words how much it spoke to me because I thought it was 100% accurate. Hi, Tacey. Thanks for joining. I think because, especially for me, for 40 years, I have heard You have to love yourself. You have to love this part about yourself. You have to learn to love your life. You have to learn to love how you look before other people will. And while I think there may be a grain of truth to that, I also think we all struggle with a lot of things. And sometimes we win those struggles and sometimes we don't. I'm 40. I still struggle with my body image. I still struggle with what I look like. Some days I look in the mirror and I think I look great. And other days I put on something and I think, wow, you do not look so hot today. And I think we all have that. And I think that's healthy as long as it doesn't go too far. But I think if we're constantly telling people, well, until you learn to love yourself, when you look in the mirror, no one else can love you, then we're basically telling people, You're not worthy of being loved because you struggle with something. And let's be honest, we all struggle with something. It doesn't matter what it is. There are things that we have either been through in our past, that we're going through currently, that we're still trying to deal with, that are from some point in our lives that we're still struggling with. And I don't think that negates the fact that we're worthy of love in any way, shape, or form. So I'd love to know what you guys think, how you guys feel about it. Like I said, I will double check because I can't remember if I shared it on Facebook or just Instagram, but I will share it on Facebook if I haven't actually shared it on Facebook yet. Because 
I really think it's important, especially for people who have kids, people who have grandkids, who have nieces, nephews, if we continue to teach the next generation what we've been taught, that we have to love ourselves before we're worthy of being loved, I think we're going to run into a really big problem and we're going to have generations of kids who feel like they can't be loved because they're struggling with things that are normal parts of growing up. How many of us, especially as teenagers, didn't struggle in some way, shape or form with body image issues? I think we all did. I don't think it matters what generation you grew up in. I don't think it matters sort of where society was at that point. I think we all did, especially in high school. High school is one of those times when if you're not popular and you're not in the in crowd, you do struggle with those things. You struggle with how you look. You struggle with how you feel. You struggle with how you act. You're still trying to figure out who you are. And so I don't want especially for the young kids that I know now, I don't want them to grow up thinking they're not worthy of love because they have struggles, because that's not true. We're all worthy of love, even though we're all struggling with something. We're all worthy of being loved by others in spite of that, because most people are struggling with something. They're going to hopefully love you anyway, and you're going to love them in return In some cases, because they struggle with something, because they're a little more human. So I think we need to start changing our definitions and we need to start changing sort of how we look at love, how we evaluate love, what makes us worthy and what doesn't. I think we as a society are sort of getting into a reckoning of sorts, especially with social media. And this like weird digital world that we live in now because I think the definition of love changes based on who you ask because of social media. So if you ask, I was reading a study last week, I think, if you ask the generation that is preteen right now what makes them feel loved, it's likes on Facebook or Instagram, or Snapchat, or TikTok, or whatever it happens to be, they feel loved when other people are following them. They feel loved when people like the content that they're posting. But if you go to someone my age in their 40s and ask them what love is, you're going to get a very different answer. If you approach someone who maybe is Tacey's age or Brenda's age, you might even get a different answer than that. And so I think having a static specific definition isn't going to continue to work for us for the rest of our lives. And I think it also evolves. I want you guys to think back to when you were a teenager, what you thought love was, versus maybe in your early 20s, what you thought love was. And now, depending on how old you are, what you think it is today. My definition for sure has changed as I've gotten older, as I've grown When I was a kid, my definition of love was different than when I was a preteen and a teenager. It certainly is different now that I'm in my 40s than it was when I was in my 20s. And I think especially because Valentine's Day is coming up, we need to talk a little more openly about this stuff because there's a lot of people who feel depressed around Valentine's Day because they don't have a significant other. And this year, I don't know if that's going to be worse or better because of COVID and because of all of the lockdowns that we've been through. People are already feeling isolated. They're already feeling alone. And having a holiday like Valentine's Day, as wonderful as it can be, just reinforces to those people that maybe they're not worthy of love. So I think we need to have these kinds of discussions. I think we need to talk a little more openly about these things because It doesn't matter if you're in a relationship or not. I don't think that is the determining factor of whether or not you're valuable, whether or not you are lovable, whether or not you have something to offer the world. Now, that's just my personal opinion. Of course, if you guys disagree, feel free to let me know. But I don't think that that's how we define love. And I don't think it's how we should define love. Maybe you're not in a relationship because you've chosen to spend some time getting to know yourself, exploring your own personal passions. Maybe you're not in a relationship because the person who you were in a relationship is no longer with us. There are lots of things that can happen that don't necessarily mean you're not worthy of being loved just because you're not currently in a relationship. And you can also be in a relationship and not feel loved, which is something we don't talk about very often. 
People make the assumption, oh, well, if you're in a relationship, you're happy. Maybe you are sometimes. Maybe sometimes you're not. Maybe you do feel loved. Maybe you don't feel loved. We have all of these preconceived notions around love that I think make it really difficult for people to feel like they can have open and honest conversations, open and honest dialogue about it. Love is a very different thing depending on who you ask and what kind of a conversation you're having with them. Sorry, my nose is running. I did not take an allergy pill today. Um, I know I have friends who, if you were to ask them exactly what love means to them, their answer wouldn't have anything to do with being in a relationship with a significant other. It has more to do with the relationship they have with their friends and the people around them. And I think we get love from more than one place. I get love from you guys showing up to live chat on Monday nights. I get love every time someone downloads and listens to the podcast. Every time I get an email that somebody has enjoyed something, whether it be a blog post or something that we've done as part of the Chasing Happiness community. I feel love every time we have a book club live chat and you guys show up and we talk about the book. There are all of these different ways that we include love into our lives. And there is a podcast episode coming next week that talks a little bit about this. But I think there are a lot of ways that we don't talk about love in our regular everyday lives. And honestly, right now, I think we're missing love. I think we're missing it a lot. We have been living through COVID for almost a year here in Ontario. I think mid-February, we kind of knew about it. And then in March, we were in lockdown. I may have, you know, been off a week or so by those dates, but realistically for a year, we haven't been able to get together with the people that we love the way we typically would throughout the course of the year. We haven't been able to celebrate love the way we typically would throughout the course of the year. That includes things like going to a wedding. I miss weddings. I never really thought about it before, but weddings are a huge celebration of love, not just of the bride and groom, but of the family, of the friends, of all of the people who just want everybody to be happy and have the best in life. We're not doing that anymore. Funerals, even though they're a sad event, are still a celebration of love about the people you've lost and the love that they showed you and that you showed them and the wonderful stories around that from all of the friends and family. We're not having those right now. We're not even able to go to the park and sit on a bench and watch people walking down the path, holding hands or kissing or all of those things. I think we're really lacking love right now. And I think that's probably one of the reasons the quote hit me so hard, because I think as a society, we are so lacking love that we are looking for it in every place we can possibly find it right now. It's one of the reasons why the Netflix show Bridgerton has done so well. For those of you that haven't seen it yet, highly recommend it. Um, but it's a show about love. It's a show about how we love each other, how we fall in love with other people, how we love our friends, how we show that love in the real world, how complicated love can be, while still being this wonderful thing that helps us move forward. I think overall, we just need love love so badly right now that I don't even know that we as a society recognize how much we're lacking it. And of course, it's a little different depending on who you are, depending on sort of what you've been going through for the last year. If you're at home, like my friend Amanda with her three kids under the age of five, you probably do feel love throughout the course of the day, but you also probably feel frustration and exhausted and all of the other things. But I think we're not spending enough time talking about the love that we're missing, about the love that we need, about how love is affecting us this year, how the lack of love has affected us over the last year, and how we're defining love in this moment. Honestly, it's something I've kind of been thinking about all day today because after I saw that quote on Instagram and shared it, I thought, how are we defining love this year? What exactly does love mean when you can't get together with people face to face, when you can't hug someone, when you can't 
give someone a kiss or an embrace or even, you know, sit on a couch with someone and just have a cup of coffee and a wonderful conversation. How do you show them love? How do you show them affection? So one of the things I was thinking about because of that was how have I shown up for people that I love this year? What have I done? And of course, I've done live chat. I've shown up for the community. I've tried to offer as much of myself as I can, but I've also gone out of my way to go to things I typically wouldn't go to. That includes Zoom meetings that I typically wouldn't venture to be a part of, not because I don't want to take part in those things, but being the person that I am, it can be emotionally exhausted for me to be in a Zoom meeting with 10 other people trying to carry on conversations and keep up with everything that's going on. But I show up because I love the people who go to them. I love the conversations that I get to have with people from all over. And I think it's important that right now we do as much as we can to show other people that we love and care about them. So this year, I've also sent a lot of letters. And Brenda, thank you. I got your birthday card. I'm not sure if I messaged you or not, um, but I did receive your birthday card. I did actually message you because we had a conversation about Canada Post. See, it just took me a minute, but I got there. Um, so I've sent a bunch of letters to people this year over the past 12 months as a way just to show them that I love them and that I care about them, especially the people who are on the other side of the world or who are in a different country than I'm in, because it's not like we can just, you know, hop in the car and go visit and show up at their door. Granted, at certain points throughout the year, maybe we could have, um, but it's definitely not something we can do right now. And I think it's important to remind those people that we're still thinking about them and that even though we can't connect with them the way we want, we do still love them and want to spend time with them. I don't know how we continue to add more love into our lives right now, especially here in Southern Ontario while we're in a lockdown. But I think we need to. I think if balloons is love for you, absolutely get some balloons. If pink glitter is love for you, shout out to Becky, um, who on my birthday sent me 900 gifts of pink glitter just so that she she could say, you know, I know you love it. Happy birthday. Hopefully it brings you some joy. Those sorts of things are what we need right now. And I think it's really vital that we put as much love into our days as we possibly can, especially because of how stressed we are, especially because it's winter here in Southern Ontario. It was snowing again today, <laughs> depending on where you lived here in the province. So it's kind of gray and cold and not pleasant. So it's the time of year we typically lock ourselves in our houses anyway, unless you're one of those winter people who likes winter sports and then maybe not so much. I am absolutely not one of those people. I do not snowshoe. I do not ski or snowboard or any of that. If you are one of those people, hopefully you're able to do some of those things at some point over this winter, um, especially if those are activities that you really love. But I typically close my door and pretend at least for, you know, 30 to 60 days that outside doesn't exist because I despise winter in a lot of ways. <laughs> but it's that time of year when you do just naturally shut yourself off a little because of the weather. And I think now we've shut ourselves off for so long that I'm not sure we're taking stock of how much of that love that is typically a part of our everyday lives that we're missing. So I'd love to hear from you guys, whether you're watching now or whether you're watching on the replay later, please post in the comments. Have you thought at all in the last 12 months about what things you are missing? What activities that you loved to do with your friends or your family that you really wish you could be doing right now? And have you been able to come up with something sort of as an alternative? I know networking has been really hard for business owners. I know that a lot of people are missing just coffee dates with their friends. I've even heard from some people um, who wish our book club met in person. And I apologize, but obviously we can't be doing that right now. But those sorts of things, like sitting down in a room with people, having a, a drink or a coffee or a tea, and having face-to-face -face conversations, that's how we connect with people. That's how we show love. That's how we receive love. So it's really difficult 
because we're in the situation right now where we don't have that and we can't get that. I don't know, I've just really been thinking about love a lot today. And I know Valentine's Day is still a little bit away, but I've also been thinking about like, how do we show up for people in our lives who aren't in relationships? Because this year isn't the kind of year where you can get together at the bar or a restaurant with all of your single friends and have dinner because we're in a lockdown, because we're not allowed to do such things. So how are you going to show up for those people? How are you going to show them love? I have written out letters to send everyone. Hopefully they'll receive them by Valentine's Day. To be able to say, you know, I know you're single. I know I'm single. I know it's not exactly what we had hoped for this year. But let's, you know, get together on Zoom or have a phone call or a text message or watch a movie together that night so that we can feel a little bit of love and a little bit of connection together, even though we are not actually getting together. And I know it's not the same thing, but it's sort of the best we can do right now. So I'm going to take what I can get. I'm going to take as much love as I possibly can get. And maybe you're one of the people who got a pet during all of this so that you had someone to love on and someone to love you back. Shout out to my brother and my sister-in-law who actually did that during COVID. Um, I think that's an absolutely wonderful thing. And I can tell you as much as I want another pet to be able to have that kind of love in my everyday life. It would mean not being able to travel whenever this all ends. And so I'm not willing to take that step. Um, so to my brother, if you're watching, I absolutely appreciate that you did not send me pictures of puppies yesterday, even though you really, really wanted to, because that would be heartbreaking and really hard for me to say no to. <laughs> but I think regardless of who you are, if you're one of those people who wants a pet and can do that, absolutely do it. Pets are going to love you in a way that no one else will, depending on the kind of pet that you get, obviously. And that's a great way to add a little bit of love into your life if you need that right now. If you want that, if you're looking for that and can actually afford to do so, I think that's a wonderful thing. At the beginning of the pandemic, we had shelters across North America that were empty because people were fostering and then deciding to adopt because everybody was home. I think that's a great thing. Oh, Brenda says Disney Plus allows you to watch a movie or show together with other people. Brenda, I did not know this, which is kind of sad because I've been watching WandaVision for like weeks now. I did not know that Disney Plus allowed you to do that. So that's awesome. I wonder, hmm, see, now I'm thinking about all the shows that I have yet to watch on Disney Plus that I could get together with people for. So that's great. Thank you for letting me know that. And for everyone else, if you didn't know that, there you go. I'm sure that there are other streaming services that do. Um, I can't speak to Prime because I don't have Prime specifically. Um, I don't know if Netflix allows you to do it or not, but I know Facebook has like a watch party where you can get together in a room and sort of watch things. It's a little different because it's through Facebook, but anyway, the more we can get together with people in any way, whether it be on the phone, whether it be on the computer, whether it be just, you know, Tonight I'm going to cook this and you cook this and we will call each other when we're done eating and we'll talk about it or whatever it happens to be. I think we need love. We need way more love right now. And I think we need to show love to other people now more than ever. I was having a conversation last week, maybe the week before, because I think we missed live chat last week, um, about just how much now when you go out and you go to the stores there is sort of a lack of understanding common decency respect people have become very standoffish because of this pandemic and fearful of other people which is why I also think we need way more love right now we need so much more to compensate for that that I don't know. I'm just going to give love away for the rest of the year and we'll see what happens. I'm going to give it to everybody. And if people don't like it, oh, well, <laughs> you can take it or leave it. It's personally your choice, but I'm given all the love I possibly can this year in as many ways as I possibly can, because I can't imagine what the year is going to bring. And I can't imagine what the world is going to look like a year from now. And I'm worried that if we don't spread a little bit more love 
and receive a little bit more love ourselves that it may not be the place we want it to be. Oh, Brenda says she's done wine and cheese with friends over FaceTime. Brenda, that's a fantastic idea. I have a couple of friends who may want to be doing that. I should think about doing that. I have one friend who we FaceTime when we're doing laundry sometimes just so we can be getting tasks done and still catch up with each other. Um, so yeah, little things like that. I think it's great for us to stay connected and continue to try our best to cultivate those relationships where we do feel loved, where we feel like we're able to offer love to someone else. It's going to be a rocky at least month or two still. Um, I am hopeful it will not be all year. But with Valentine's Day coming quickly and with us not being able to do the typical things for Valentine's Day, nobody is getting in their car and going on a romantic dinner. Nobody's going to the movies for Valentine's Day night. People aren't having those kind of romantic get-togethers that they typically would have been having. So what are you going to do instead? How are you going to celebrate? How are you going to show the people that you love and care about love if you can't do it in the ways that typically you would? And I don't know. For me, if somebody showed up at my door with airplane tickets after COVID is over, obviously, um... I would feel an immense amount of love for anybody who bought me a ticket to go anywhere, really, <laughs> just because I miss traveling so much. And it's something that I love to do. And it's been such a huge, important part of my life that, yeah, that would totally win me over. FYI, for anybody watching, buy me a plane ticket somewhere and I will absolutely love you forever. Or any kind of trip, really. That's just who I am. <laughs> But think about it this week. Think about how you're going to celebrate Valentine's Day. Think about how you're going to show the people in your life who you typically would get together with. Maybe not just for Valentine's Day, but, you know, over the next couple of months, how are you going to show them that you love them still? How are you sending love out into the world? What are you doing? Brenda says, we're having breakfast for dinner. Ooh, heart-shaped pancakes. I love it. Pink hollandaise. Really? I don't think I've ever seen pink hollandaise. Take a picture. I might need to see that, Brenda. I do love the idea of heart-shaped pancakes because that's just fun. I'm not a huge pancake lover, but I do like heart-shaped things. So I don't know if you guys know edible arrangements, but they do heart-shaped pineapple cutouts that they dip in chocolate. And I absolutely adore those. One, because I love pineapple and chocolate. Who doesn't? But two, because they're hearts. Come on. Anything shaped like a heart, I absolutely love. I have a friend who her and I learned how to scuba dive together and we bought a box of Timbits to go to this one scuba diving event and the first Timbit she pulled out actually was two Timbits combined together but it happened to make a little heart. So every time I get Timbits now I think of her and I think about her heart Timbit. So I love food that's shaped like hearts just in general. Red food coloring added to the sauce. See Brenda that's I don't, mm, I'm going to have to I'm going to have to see pictures of this. It sounds amazing, but I'm going to have to see pictures because I honestly don't think I've ever seen that anywhere. But I do love anything that's sort of a pinky color, um, as long as it's sort of a darky pink instead of like the light baby pink. But again, it doesn't matter. If it's shaped like a heart, it's totally even better than regular stuff. So it sounds wonderful. I'm sure it will be a fantastic evening for you, Brenda. I love that you already have a plan for what you're doing. I think that's wonderful. And for everybody else... Think about it. You've got a couple of weeks still to think about it because it's only the first. And think about how you're defining love these days, what it really means to you. And keep in mind the quote that I talked about. Keep in mind that it doesn't matter if you're struggling with something. It doesn't matter if you're having a bad day. Maybe you lost your temper. Maybe you got frustrated. Maybe you're like, excuse me. Maybe you're like me today and you got angry because you deleted something accidentally and you got angry at yourself, but you're still angry. If that's the case, you're still worthy of love. Having those feelings, having an off day, all of those things don't make you any less worthy of love. Hey, Billy. So keep that in mind. And whenever you see those quotes that say, first, you have to learn to love yourself, Stop and think about them. Think about whether or not you think personally that's true.
because I don't think that's true anymore. I think even if we don't love ourselves, we absolutely are still worthy of love. Even on the days when we don't feel like we're worthy of love, we are 100% still worthy of love. Even on the days when you hate your kids, you still love your kids. I'm sure Billy can attest to that. I'm sure Brenda and Tacey can too, because anybody who's been a parent or anybody who has nieces or nephews, you know, some days you hate your kids because they're being little pains in the bum, but that's okay. You still love them. That doesn't change the fact that you love them. And I think that's true for all parents. That's just my assumption based on seeing everybody out in the world. Obviously, I don't have kids myself, but you know, I was a kid once and I'm sure I was a pain in the arse. So I know my parents still loved me and I was still worthy of being loved even on those days. And you are too, regardless of situation. So remember, you're lovable and you are worth it and you are valid. And I think more of us need to spread love and receive love and show some love and kindness to ourselves, especially right now, because it's hard right now. We're hard on ourselves right now because of everything we're going through. So let's just be a little bit more love. Let's spread a little bit more love and let's do what we can. I hope you guys have a great week. I am hopeful that tomorrow will start better than today did. If you guys haven't heard today's podcast, definitely check it out and you will know why today was so frustrating for me. But I promise I am okay and in a much better mood now than I was when I deleted the original podcast. So have a great week, guys. Have an absolutely wonderful evening, whatever is left of your evening. And Billy, I know you're working, so don't work too hard. Brenda, hopefully you get to relax. Tacey, I know you're watching stuff on TV, so hopefully you enjoy whatever it is. And I will chat with you guys next Monday. Have a great week. Feel free to reach out to me if you guys want to chat at any point throughout the week about anything. And I'll see you guys next week, okay? Bye.